Morning guys, uh, it is Thursday morning. Um, let's start off with the weather forecast. It's gonna be a high of four, mainly sunny, uh, with a 20% chance of rain. Okay, now that that's done, so let's get into the next thing we're doing here, okay? So uh, we can plot the ordered pair on the Cartesian grid, and so we can plot our shape. So let's, let's translate that shape, okay? So first thing first, you're gonna need pen, ruler, piece of graph paper. So let's start this out. Hopefully everybody has been enjoying the time off. Not too much work, but enough to keep you busy. Cartesian grid, and we are going to do translations. Okay. Let's go ahead. What is this? April 15th, April 16th? I don't even know. It is April 16th. One person mentioned that they couldn't access the, or a couple of people mentioned they couldn't access directly from the channel. So I'm gonna make the, the videos public now so you can access from the link and from the channel, okay? So let's go, I can pick zero. Let's go a 10 by 10 grid. So let's do that right now. So grab your pencil and we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that'd be the last time that I do this in the lesson. I'll just have the grid already done. So we can just get right to the, the meat of what we're doing here. Okay, remember Y to the sky. This is your vertical axis and then your x-axis is your horizontal axis, okay? So we go negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative ten. If you hear my kids, it's because they're pretty rambunctious this morning. You can't leave your house for a month. That's kind of what happens. Five weeks now. Anyways, okay. Okay, so let's put a shape um, let's put a shape here. Okay, let's just put a triangle. Okay, so let's do one, two, and three. Okay, so I just randomly picked a few points. We have our shape. Whoops, went a little bit overboard there. Okay. So here's our shape. So this is in a positive y quadrant and a positive x quadrant, okay? So this is called the object. So our original shape, okay? Whatever we're going to be translating, uh, we're gonna call the object, okay? Now, I, I don't have the information right now in order to, to move this, okay? So what I need is I need a, a translation translation vector okay and that's like fancy term for basically um, the coordinates um, of where I'm moving this shape okay so you get one set or one translation vector and I show you kind of what you need to do with it so let's say I'm gonna go negative four and Oh, let's go negative 
let's go negative 6 and 2, okay? So negative 6 and 2. So there's our translation vector, it's negative 6 and 2. So the main thing we need to remember is that the translation vector, the coordinates are in the same order as an ordered pair. So this negative 6 is going to be on the x-axis, and this is going to be on the y-axis, okay? So if we're going negative 6, we know that on the x-axis, we need to go left because this is where our negative values are okay so we're actually think about a number line right if this is a number line and this is zero and we go right on the number line if we have a positive integer and if we go left on the number line when we have a negative integer we know that when we see that 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 negative six we know we're going to the left i think that's a that's a good way to remember it okay so we have our x value first followed by our y value and just think about it as a number line okay um, so we have negative 6. So we know we're going to be moving. We're going to be moving to the left. So this shape is going to be actually moving on the horizontal axis, the x-axis, to the left. Okay? Now let's look to y. So y is 2. That is a positive value. So if we look to the y-axis, the vertical axis, we know that, again, if we were to take a number line and not have it horizontal but have it vertical, we know that going up, is positive and we know that going down is negative so we've got a 2 there so we know that that's going to be going up the number line okay so what I'm gonna do this is the object okay the image is going to be what's actually translated so our, our original shape is our object but the new one that we have is actually going to be called the image and we'll put that in a minute so we can have a B C. So we're going to have triangle A, B, C right there. Okay? So let's go ahead and do this, all right? So what I want to do is I'm going to go to my A vertice and I'm going to count over negative 6 to the left and 2 up. So let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six okay so i'm at six up all right and then we want to go up to one two so there's that value right there or that new coordinate if we go to b we're going to go to the left negative six and then we're going to go up to so we're going to go one two three four five six one two there's that value right there Okay, and then we got C right here. So we're gonna go over six to the left. Remember, it's a negative value, and then up two. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Okay, now take a look at this. Okay, we want to think about the difference in values as a check. Okay, so we have we've we've moved each vertice over in this case to the left on the x-axis and, and then up with y but we want to make sure that it makes sense okay so we want to think about how we check these things look at our starting coordinate of a our starting coordinate of a is four okay uh, and and if we are just going on the the x-axis you look at, at six there so we ended up at negative two so you know the difference between negative two and four is, is six so that value is correct we also started at 6 right there, okay? And now that new point is at 8. Well, the difference between 8 and 6 is 2, so we know that we're right there. So we do the same thing. That, that's a good way to check, okay? Look at the difference in your starting point and then your finishing point, okay? So we've used the translation vector. What we're going to do... three one two three one two three one two three and then this is going through one two three one two three so we have moved our shape 
or we have translated our shape with a translation vector of negative 6 and 2. Okay? So what we can do is um, we can go, we have a right angle triangle. So our top vertice A, 1, B, 1, C, 1, and this is our image. It's important to be familiar with the terminology that we're doing. Now, uh, here's a question for you, okay? So, how could we relate this to something we could use in, in the real world? Where, um, you know, we've got a set of coordinates that are allowing us to reposition something into a different location, okay? R like, uh, it's not GPS here, right? It's basically just taking numerical coordinates, uh, I guess GPS is part of it though, and, and moving something into another area. Where is this used in, in real life? I can think of a couple examples of where you would, you would use this kind of vector, you would use this kind of um, coordinate system to reposition or to move something into another area. Think about that, that's, that's one of your questions, okay? So what you can do is you can just give me a written response um, with the, uh, I think just probably the end of the activity that I'm going to post later on today. It's got a couple of questions, um, or you can just write me in an email. Again, no pressure. Try to get it done when you can. Okay. If you want, and and I get more than let's say five or six responses, I'm going to post another example of this tomorrow. I, I want to keep the lessons shortish, okay? Because I'm not in the room with you guys, so I'm looking at the camera. It's already 11:50. Okay, so there's one example. If you would like another example, I can post another example uh, tomorrow. I'm going to, um, if it's required, okay? That's really all the lessons for this week. It's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, that's the end of the week. So we had, just to recap here, we had the Cartesian grid. Uh, we had the terms that I asked you to look at. I asked you to do the three, uh, the three questions. I posted the solutions for those, okay? Now we have translating an object. I'm going to post on Google Classroom the link to this video and then also an activity sheet to to go with it okay where it's just a few questions where you have to translate an object so finish that up by friday um, and again i can post another example if i get enough people that say that they require it if this is fine fantastic okay so uh and then we're going to start on monday with reflecting an object so if we had let's say we had this object right here what is that going to look like if we want it to reflect it across the y-axis. So we actually take this and we reflect it over, okay? Then we're going to do rotation. So you can really see how all this stuff kind of builds on um, what's happening. All right, that's the installment of Mr. Robert's uh, you know, geometry math lesson today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It wasn't too long. Hopefully you copied along as we went. Any questions, again, send to me today, guys. Um, I think it's probably about 8.45 on Thursday morning. I'll be online for most of the day. Have a good one, and I'll see you soon.